Welcome to Canterbury Cathedral on this Easter Saturday morning. We've woken to a morning of pouring rain, but now the rain has gone off and allowed us to come outside, which I wanted to do because this morning we move our location of the Easter stories from Jerusalem to Galilee by the lakeside. So we've come out near the water of the fish pond here with the net spread across it because of the danger of herons, of course. But it gives us a, a flavour of that early morning when Jesus appears to his disciples in Galilee. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Blessed be God for ever. Some verses from the Easter anthems. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who sleep. The first of the Psalms for this 18th morning of the month is Psalm 90, and I suppose we know that best in its hymn form. Isaac Watts converted into, into a hymn which is well loved, O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Here are some verses from the psalm itself, Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes as a watch in the night. The days of our life are three score years and ten, or if our strength endures even four score, yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they soon pass away and we are gone. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Show your servants your works and let your glory be over their children. And may the gracious favour of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper our handiwork. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. So we read from St John chapter 21 and we have changed the scene now from Jerusalem to Galilee. Remember how Jesus said on the night of his betrayal and arrest, after I am risen, I will go before you to Galilee. And the young man on Easter morning at the tomb reminded the women of that. He has gone before you to Galilee. So here are the disciples on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Galilee. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, 
children, do you have any fish? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and pulled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. It's a wonderful resurrection sentence. Come and have breakfast. Some friends of ours who live in Rhode Island, and that's a place where there are many places named after names of places in the Bible, quite often take us to breakfast at the little harbour which is called Galilee. The brother of these was a fisherman in that area as the family had been. And it's a wonderful thing to sit down and see the fishermen have breakfast in Galilee, for well, that is the name of the place. And this morning we are watching fishermen invited to breakfast after a night's work, which was going to be a failure. And suddenly the stranger on the shore converts that failure into a new beginning. Simon Peter's earlier sentence, I am going fishing, speaks of his frustration at all that has happened and not knowing what's going to happen next. So let's go back to something we know. Let's begin with things we can do. I'm going fishing. And the others say, we'll come too. And all night long, they catch nothing. Until at the earliest light, there is the stranger on the shore telling them they're fishing on the wrong side of the boat, fish on the other side. And suddenly, their net threatens to break because of the great quantity of fish. And they haul them ashore and find breakfast waiting for them. Jesus will ask them to bring some of their fish and add to that. Often, it's good to go back to what we know. We know how to do. Back to original places. But we must do so in expectation of the fact that God can make of those original places and the things that we know how to do something entirely new in his creation. And that's what happens here to the fishermen. Tomorrow we shall complete the story of their breakfast and find that this is more than a new beginning. It's a total new creation with the risen Lord serving them at breakfast and offering them much more than just fish and bread, offering them full forgiveness and new life. So we say our prayers, and as always in this Mother Church of the Communion, we remember areas of the Anglican Communion. On this day, the 18th of April, we remember the Diocese of Monmouth in Wales and Cherry Van, the bishop there, the Diocese of Western Tanganyika in Tanzania and Sedok Makeya, the bishop there, and the Diocese of Igbomina in Nigeria and Emmanuel Adikola, the bishop there. We remember all the folk in the communities that they look after. Here we remember Justin, our Archbishop, Rose, Bishop of Dover, Tim, Bishop at Lambeth, and on this day, the parish of Holy Trinity Margate and Clifford Stocking, in his ministry there. So we say a prayer for all those who might be suffering in any way today and remember those who are on our hearts who we love and would want to pray for.
O God, our refuge and strength, our hope and our peace, be with us through the hours of this day as our protector and our salvation. Calm our anxieties, ease our fears, soften any sadness that we may find in you our true rest and perfect restoration through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we say, each in our own language and in our own way, the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Moment of silence. The rain begins again and refreshes the earth for you to say any prayers you would like to. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.